record ulit. Okay, so again, pag sinabi nating uh, sources of drugs, of course, uh, marami tayong sources of drugs. Of course, number one dyan, yung pinakalam ninyo. So we have the marijuana or yung tanatawag na rin na Indian hemp. So isa lang yan. May nagtanong kung uh, ang Indian hemp and marijuana, magkaibang uh, plant ba yan? Of course, iisa lang yan. Or marijuana or yung tanatawag natin na uh, Indian hemp. Okay, so what is the uh, scientific name class of marijuana? Okay, so what is the scientific name of marijuana? Please answer on the comment section. Ano yung uh, scientific name for marijuana? Anong alit yun? Kasi very uh, con ano to eh, controversial lang ang discussion yung when it comes sa marijuana. Okay, cannabis sativa L. Okay, again, yung uh, scientific name for marijuana class na nyo that is cannabis sativa L. Okay, ano naman ang ibig sabihin ng L na to? Okay, L stands for what? Okay. So again, so ano yung L? Uh, ano yung ibig sabihin ng L natin dyan sa cannabis sativa L? Okay, which is the scientific name of marijuana or na natawag na nila engine niya. Sige. Okay, ano yung ibig sabihin ng L natin? Please uh, answer on the comment section. Hindi yung ano ha, hindi yung alam nyo lang. Oh, patay. Mm -hmm. Parang hindi ka... Parang hindi ko student si Daniel J. Mondello. Ah. Bakit lima ang sagot ninyo? Saan yung kinuha yan? Ah, saan yung kinuha ang lima? <laughs> That is, ano, ah, ano yung sagot natin kapag L? That stands for? Ano yung ibig sabihin ng L? What is L? In the cannabis at iba L. Bakit, bakit may lima na sagot? What is L stands for? Okay, ito yung common mistake ng mga students sa pagdating sa board exam. Kasi yung naturo sa kanila is iba. Okay? Hindi siya lima. So ano yon? Ano yung letter L? Kasi nakasanayan ninyo na lima kasi five fingers daw. Or five uh, yung leaves niya. Okay? So hindi siya lima. So ano ang ibig sabihin ng L class? Uh, hindi nyo pala pinapanood yung mga pinapost ko na video sa ano ah sa Facebook, di ba? Nakalagay doon kung ano yung cannabis sa Tiba L. Okay, so mamaya isend natin ah. Linayos. Okay. Sige, uh, thank you, Hana. So very good. Uh, Hana, paki-ano nga, paki-share ng link nung yung ano ko nung uh, nung video about sa cannabis sa Tiba L kasi para kasi yung iba so magsagot nila is lima. Ibig sabihin hindi pala nila alam. Okay? Um, uh, ayan na, i-share mo doon sa GC natin yung video ko sa TikTok okay, yung sinagot ko yung cannabis sa Tiba L okay class, okay lang yan so uh, nagkamali daw pa, pala si Daniel J baka basher ko to si Daniel hindi, <laughs> hindi follower okay, so yan so dapat lahat ang pinopost ko dyan lahat dyan class merong may reason bakit ko pinopost yan ibig sabihin yan mostly ang lumalabas sa board exam again ang uh, scientific name for marijuana or tinatawag natin na engine hem is the cannabis sativa L. Okay. So, yan. Okay po, sir. Thank you, Hana. So, yan. Again, pag sinabi natin marijuana or engine hem, that is cannabis sativa L. Kaya, class, mag, kapag may mga question kayo sa uh, board exam, itanong nyo doon sa GC natin kasi sagutin natin yan. Again, ang marijuana or engine hemp or the cannabis sativa L, that is the scientific name for marijuana. So ang L dyan, that stands for linayos. Hindi lima ha, kasi ang nakasanayan na naitunuro sa inyo during undergrad, of course kahit ako rin, di ba? Uh, ang naturo sa amin is lima talaga kasi five fingers daw which is wrong di ba so sa akin dati nagtakao bakit hindi mali yung sagot ko yun pala okay that is uh, linayos okay kasi nga ang uh, plant na marijuana or the engine hem okay it was credited class before kay Carl Linayos that is C A R L L I N N A US. Carly Nayos. So, si Carly Nayos class is a Swedish botanist. Uh, sino ba yun? Okay, so si uh, Carly Nayos is a Swedish botanist who discovered the plant na marijuana. So, that's why yung letter L dyan, that's not stand for Lima, it is uh, credited before Carly Nayos. Kaya, di ba? Uh, cannabis sa Tiba Alin. Di ba? Minsan na, ano nyo, na napapansin ninyo sa ibang mga medical society ng mga website, nakalagay doon, cannabis sa Tiba Alin 
or katabi sa Tiba Linayos. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, it was credited kay Carl Linayos, which is, uh, he is a Swedish botanist na ka-discovered ng plant na marijuana. So, we have the Cannabis Sativa L. Marijuana or Engine Hemp. Nakuha ba? Nakuha na class. Na nasundan ninyo? Clear na ba tayo? Wala na ba tayong violent reaction dyan? Okay. So, yan, di ba? Uh, yung mga students, sir, um, bakit sa uh, ano ganitong uh, review center, ganitong school, li, uh, lima yung naturo sa amin? Mabuti na panood ko. Which is wrong yon yung lima. Kasi yun yung nakasanayan, which is hindi dapat. Okay? So, hindi talaga yung class. Kasi kapag ganun yung explain mo, Uh, based on technical definition, hindi yun yung magiging sagot natin. Okay? Walang basis kung baga ginawa lang or that is opinionated. Then, and opinion is not allowed in the board exam. So, tanda nyo lang kapag sinabi natin um, uh, male, okay, marijuana, of course, that is staminate, while the female marijuana is tinatawag natin na festilate. Okay? Festilate. So, kapag sinabi natin marijuana class, of course, that is the Pumagaya yung pinakamarami sa Pilipinas because it is uh, easy to cultivate, lalong-lalo na sa Pilipinas class. Saan natin makikita ang uh, sa lugar sa Pilipinas na nandang sabore sa mga anong place sa Pilipinas, okay? Within the Philippine archipelago na matatawag natin na marami or talamak yung marijuana. Okay, kasi di ba sinasabi nila it is easy to cultivate. Then kahit... Yung lugar na hindi na maabot ng tao ay meron pa ring marijuana sa lugar na to. Ano anong lugar yun, class? Okay, na matatawag natin na marijuana is uh, one of the major problem. Anong lugar yun? Baka matulog na kayo ha, wala bakit walang sumasagot. Okay, very good host that is uh, sa Cordillera, okay? sa part ng Cordillera class. Okay? Doon ang pinakamaraming marijuana. Kasi uh, ang mga argument nila, kasi daw yung uh, mga ibon, tapos yung hangin, yung buto ng marijuana, okay, na ano daw, uh, kung mga pumupunta sa ibang lugar, kaya ang dami o hindi mapigilan yung pagdami ng marijuana plant. Okay? But of course, on the uh, practical side or in the... Uh, Oh, titina talaga natin hindi yon eh okay tinanim talaga yon ng tao okay so pero of course um malay mo di ba mer isang factor rin yung tinatawag natin na uh, 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 baka ano baka na ano baka na dala ng uh, ng ibon or sa hangin okay so yan but of course class di ba uh, ano ano libot na yung cordillera kasi i stayed uh, Uh, Kung baga, nanirahan ako sa Baguio City for more than two years. Okay. More than two years yung review ko class during my review. Kasi pinagsabay ko ang review at masteral ko sa University of Baguio. Kaya uh, nalibot ko na lahat ng part ng Cordillera. So, magandang lugar talaga yan. Di ba? So, ang tahimik. At uh, very um, baga, close to nature. Okay. So, again, ang um, marijuana. Okay, ang male marijuana distaminate, ang female marijuana, of course, that is pestilate. Okay, then second, we have the opium. Okay, ang uh, opium, ano naman ang kanyang uh, scientific name, of course, we have the uh, papa bear somniferum. Okay, saan naman galing class ang tinatawag natin na opium? Okay, sa anong, uh, anong halaman naman ang galing ang opium? Sige nga. Again, saan ang galing na halaman ng opium natin? Okay, of course, sa opium poppy plant. Okay, so, sa opium poppy plant, yung tanatawag natin, or nanggaling yung opium, or the uh, papa bear somniferum na tanatawag natin. Then, uh, third, we have the cocaine. Okay, so ang cocaine, of course, we have uh, tanatawag natin yan na erectosilent coca, or minsan, tanatawag rin natin yan ng coca bash. Okay, coca bash or erectosilent uh, sosa, or coca para, rather. That is the third derivative of opium or it is uh, an ingredient or ingredient in class in a cup syrup. Okay? So of course, nakakita naman kayo ng cup syrup. So ang cocaine, okay? Meron cocaine yan. Uh, kaya that's why, di ba, nakaka-addict. 
yung pag-inom ng cup syrup. So that's why kasi merong cocaine yan. It is an ingredient in cup syrup. Okay? So yan. Of course, class, kapag uh, gumawa ng mga droga, hindi na naman isang chemical ang hinahalo dyan. Okay? Or plain chemical. Of course, it is a variety or combination of the different uh, ingredient, different chemicals para makabuo or makapag-create ng isang uh, result or isang droga. So that is uh, cocaine again. Uh, that is the uh, erectrocylum coca or coca bash, which is the, it serves as the third derivative of opium or which is the ingredient in cup zero. Then, of course, we have the meth or the shabu, okay? The ice, ang daming pangalan na shabu, no? So ang shabu, okay, of course, that is the most... Uh, abused drug in the Philippines. Okay, the, kumbaga, yan yung tinatawag natin na uh, that is the most prevalent drug in the Philippines. So, we have the uh, Epedra vulgaris or Epidrine. Okay, mamaya merong uh, ano yun natin, yung shabu natin, yung shabu sa kabilang discussion. Then, of course, we have the LSD. So, uh, we have the ergot fungus. Okay, pag sinabi natin LSD class, LSD stands for what is ibig sabihin ng LSD? Sige, uh, ilagay nyo sa comment section. LSD stands for in the uh, sources of drug. Ano ibig sabihin ng LSD class? What is LSD? Uh, naririnig nyo ba ako class? Naririnig ba? Baka ano ha? Uh, what is LSD? Uh, wait lang. Tingnan natin. Baka... Um, uh, wait lang ha. ang uh, Okay, so okay naman pala. Okay, so anong ibig sabihin ng LSD? Uh, uh, you are not familiar with LSD or familiar kayo? Okay, very good. Uh, Tasha and Daniel. So that is lysergic acid, dipinalamide. Okay? So dipinalamide din kasi ah, yan yung tinatawag natin na LSD or the uh, the galing of course of uh, ergot fungus. Okay? Lys lysergic acid, dipinalamide. Okay? So yan yung LSD. So again, ito yung tinatawag natin na source of drug, marijuana, opium, cocaine, uh, shabu, and of course the LSD. So of course we have number 7 we have the mescaline. Okay, ang mescaline, of course, uh, nanggaling yan sa peyote cactus. Okay, peyote cactus. While the psilocybin, psilocybin, eh, wala. Um, psilocybin. Okay, eh, hindi, hindi. Maling spelling ko, no? Uh, psilocybin. Okay, mamaya. Okay, of course, that is uh, psilocybin, rather. Uh, psilocybin, of course, that is the mushroom. Okay, ang tanda nyo dyan, class, we have the uh, mescaline, MP, para hindi kayo magkamali. Ha? So, MP, ang M, that stands for mescaline. Ang P, that is uh, peyote cactus. Okay, so yeah, that's why we have the the MP. Okay, while the psilocybin naman, that is uh, PM, psilocybin, that is PM class. Kasi, of course, yung letter P, psilocybin, and of course, uh, ang M, that is uh, mushroom. Okay, kaya daw we have the MP and PM. Mescaline, peyote, cactus, psilocybin, of course, that is mushroom. Okay, so yan. Ang sources of drugs na meron tayo. Okay, then of course, we have the methods of administering drugs. Uh, number one dyan, of course, in ingestion. Ang ingestion, uh, this is the safest and the most convenient and economical route whenever possible. Of course, ingestion, orally. Okay, so orally through uh, your mouth. Okay, that is the safest and the most convenient. Diba kapag uminom tayo ng uh, paracetamol, bioflu, okay, so ingestion and gas. The most safest and the most convenient. Okay, na tanatawag natin na methods of administering drugs. So meaning, you will take uh, the drugs orally. Ingestion yan. Then, of course, second, we have the injection. Okay, so injection, of course, it is a form of drug administration over a faster response. Kung gusto mo agad-agad mag yung droga na na-intake mo, so kagamitan natin ngayon ng injection. 
So the oral method, of course, compared to oral method, mas mabilis ang response or ang apekto class ng tinatawag natin na injection. Gagamitan natin yan ng needle or other devices such as si, um, syringe okay, to deliver drugs directly into the body tissue and blood circulation. Again, ang ingestion, orally yan. Ang injection naman, of course, sa mga uh, sa for faster response, gagamitan natin ng needle. Okay, to deliver yung drugs directly on the part or tissue of the body and of course, yung sa blood circulation para i-epekto agad yung whatever drugs na i-intake or i-inject class sa isang uh, subject or person. Then, of course, we have the number three, inhalation. Ang inhalation naman class, of course, the, the use of gaseous and volatile drugs such as, uh, of course, breathe. Okay, breathing. Okay, so inhalation. So, uh, and absorb rapidly through the mucus of the respiratory tract. Okay, class. Ano yung example class ng inhalation? Inhalation. Uh, ano yung mga drugs class na ini-inhale ng mga, of course, individual? Anong example nun? Of course, alam na alam nyo. Inhalation. Uh -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ano, ano? Okay, of course, class, ang the best example natin for inhalation, okay, aside sa mga sinabi ninyo na mga any, uh, any drugs, of course, ang pinaka-best example natin for inhalation is yung mga rugby, di ba? Rugby boys, di ba? Inhale, exhale. So, ayan, uh, it is absorbed rapidly through the mucus of the respiratory tract of a person. So, that is inhalation. So, ayan, ulitin natin. Before tayo proceed sa iba, Okay, pag sinabi natin ingestion, the most safest or the most convenient, of course, that is orally. Injection naman, faster respond by the use of needle or syringe, while the inhalation naman, of course, uh, to breathe or to absorb rapidly yung uh, tanatawag na tana, mu to, through the mucus of the respiratory tract. So that is uh, that is the methods of administering drugs. Okay, nakuha? Okay, so uh, dito tayo. Please, um, basahin mo muna si uh, Daniel Bondelo. Uh, Daniel, uh, nandiyan ba si Daniel? Uh, available ba si Daniel? So, let's uh, proceed kay ano, Hana. Hana Binuya. Yes, sir. Ano yun ito ba? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Loud and clear. Methods of administering drugs. One ingestion. This is the, this is the CPS most convenient and economical route to ever possible. Orally din kung tawagin. Injection form of drug administration offers a faster response than oral method It make use of a needle or other device, shearing, to deliver drugs directly into the body tissue and blood circulation. Re-inhalation, this route makes, makes use of gaseous and volatile drugs which are breathed and absorbed rapidly through the mucus of the respiratory tract. Okay. So, yan. Okay, again, so we have the methods of administering drugs. So, ingestion, injection, uh, we have inhalation. So, thank you. So, uh, sino ba yung nag-chat? Ay, kumakain ito pala si ano, Daniel. Okay, then, of course, we have number four. We have topical. Okay, ang topical naman class, this refers to the application of drugs directly to the body side, such as the skin and the mucous membrane. Okay, ibig sabihin directly, ah, okay, directly ah, pinapasok yung tinatawag natin na drugs on the body side. Okay, so made to be put on skin. Okay, to be, uh, made to be put on skin. So that is a topical, okay, the topical administration. Then, of course, we have number five, the ayontoporesis. Okay, ang ayontoporesis, the introduction of drugs into the deeper layer of the skin. Okay, into the deeper layer of the skin uh, by the use of special type of electric current for local effect. Okay, so topical, again, application of drugs directly to the body side. 
whatever side of your body, in-insert yan. Then, ang uh, ion topiresis naman, on the deeper layer of the skin, using the special type of electric current for local effect. Tanda nyo, ha? Kapag tanong sa board exam, it is the uh, method of administering drugs were in the drugs is inserted into the deeper layer of the skin by the use of the special type of electric current for local effect that is ion topiresis. Pag sinabi naman na uh, this is the drug administration wherein yung application of drugs is directly to the body site such as the skin and the mucous membrane. So basically, ang topical, those are drugs uh, intended or to be made to be put on skin. Okay, so yan ang topical and iontopereses. Okay, sige nga, basahin mo ulit si Giselle. Giselle? Nandiyan ba si Giselle? Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Para ma ma marinig natin yes, lahat ng boses niyo. Sige. Topical. This refers to the application of drugs directly to a body site such as the skin and the mucous membrane made to be put on the skin. Ion toporesis, the introduction of drugs into the deeper layers of the skin by the use of special type of electric current for local effect. Okay, so thank you. So that is topical and of course the ion, sorry, ion toporesis. Okay, though, and of course class, meron tayong tanatawag na golden crescent, okay? So we have the up eye, okay? So dati kasi, we have the uh, double eye. Kasi nandyan pa si India. So ngayon wala na ha. So ang Golden Crescent na lang class, the, ang Golden Crescent class that is composed of Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. Okay, so Golden Crescent and Golden Triangle. So anong color class ng tanatawag natin ng Golden Crescent? Anong color? Alam ba, so for example, tanong, what is the color of the Golden Crescent? kung saan matatagpuan si Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. Sige, class, sagutin nyo nga kung nasa right state of mind kayo. Okay, anong color na nagre-represent ng Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran? Mm -hmm. Anong color yon? Ayan. Anong color class ng Golden Crescent? Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Natawa ko. So, actually, ano yun eh? Pang, ano lang, pang bluff. <laughs> of course, gold. Kasi di ba nakalagay yun? Oh, golden Crescent. Tapos, sinagot ni JB Yellow. O, di ba? <laughs> so, eh. Uh, tinignan ko lang class kung ano. Kung na baka ano kayo. Baka ma... Ano yun? Ganitong oras kasi ito yung ano eh. Wow, ang sarap itulog, di ba? So, baka, baka, baka nakatulog pa si JB, oh. Na, prank lang yun, ha? It's a prank. Okay. So, of course, class, that is gold. Kasi golden crescent nakalagay, oh. Okay. So, yeah, it's a prank. So, yan. Bakit, yeah. Bakit mo sinagot ang yellow, yung JB? Ha? Bakit yellow ang sinagot mo? <laughs> may, may, sinag may, ano, siguro ang guardian angel mo, eh. May binulong. So, okay. Again, the Golden Crescent, that is Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. Okay, of course, that is the Golden Crescent. Then, uh, next tayo. At, okay, walang gold sa rainbow po, kaya yellow ang sagot ko. Okay, sige, uh, but uh, not justified pa rin. <laughs> so, again, then of course, we have the Golden Triangle. Of course, ang tanda niya lang, we have the BLP. So we have the Laos, uh, Thailand, and Burma. Okay, or Burma, Laos, and Thailand. Okay, so yan yung tinatawag natin ng Golden Triangle. Triangle, better. So again, ang Golden Crescent that is um, composed of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran. While the Golden Triangle naman, we have the BLT. So we have the Laos, Thailand, and Burma. Okay, so yan. BLT and of course the Apai. Okay, so we have now the common abuse drugs. Okay, number one, we have the MET. Okay, ang MET, of course, yung ano niya, that is uh, methamphetamine hydrochloride or tinatawag na din na shabu. 
of course, that was discovered first class in 1919 in Japan. Okay, yan yung origin class ng ment or shabu. Again, metamphetamine hydrochloride that is the shabu. Or tinatawag naman sana ice. Okay, so bakit na ano yun? Bakit na huli? Uh, bakit ang number two wala? Okay, so uh, next. Uh, wait lang. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so again class, unahin natin. So we have number one, of course, the met or yung tinatawag natin na uh, metamphetamine hydrochloride or shabu. Uh, and of course, that was discovered in Japan. Okay, in Japan on no, 1919. Then second, of course, we have the marijuana or engine hemp. Tinatawag natin, of course, yung uh, rope minsan, di ba? Or the cannabis sativa sa... Uh, tetrahydrocannabinol o yung tinatawag natin na the resin oil na makuha natin. Uh, mamaya na natin i-fall view kasi kapag i-fall view ko hindi masali or hindi madali si uh, marijuana. Okay? So after this slide, i-fall view natin. So again, pag sinabi natin meth, that is metamphetamine hydrochloride or shabu, okay, that was discovered in Japan on 1990 or formulated in Japan. Then ang marijuana or engine hemp or rope, that is the cannabis sativa uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, yun yung oil class na makukuha sa marijuana or engine hemp. Then third, we have the methylene dioxide, metamphetamine or the MDMA or yung tinatawag natin class na ecstasy okay, na na-discovered yan uh, during 1912 or in Germany. Originally class, of course, ang uh, MDMA, alam naman natin, or ecstasy, that is the sex drugs or party drugs. Okay, kaya di ba? Uh, yung mga party goer. So um, hindi ma hindi magkalayo na nagkakaroon or nagte-take sila ng ecstasy. Party drugs or sex drugs. Okay, while ang coca plant, okay, ang coca plant naman of course that is a cocaine. So electrocyte coca or the coca bash. While the opium naman, we have the um, uh, opium poppy plants or sa fava or somniferum or the opium. Okay, dito tayo. So yan. Again, ang common abuse drugs in the Philippines, of course, na una, siya shabu. Then second, marijuana. Third, uh, the MDMA or the ecstasy, of course, the sex drugs or party drugs. Ang coca plant naman, that is electrocyte coca or the cocaine. And opium poppy plant, ang napoproduce niya is the opium, of course, the fava beer somniferum, the scientific name. Okay, class. Meron tayong tinatawag sa board exam or pagdating sa drugs na derivatives. Pag sinabi natin derivatives, saan ba nang galing or it came from or saan ba nang galing yung drugs na to? Okay, saan ba? Okay, ang magtatanong ako ha din, sasagutin ninyo sa comment section. Okay, saan ba nang galing ang tinatawag natin na opium? Okay, saan nang galing si opium class? Okay, sa comment section, saan ang galing si Opium, please? Saan ba? Sino na sumagot? Okay, of course, class, ang Opium, that, uh, kung magandang galing yan, sa Opium Poppy Plant. Okay, kaya nagaroon tayo ng uh, Opium. Okay, Opium Poppy uh, Poppy plant. Okay, how about naman class? Saan naman ang galing? Sorry, very good. Saan naman ang galing ngayon ang tinatawag natin na morphine? Okay, saan naman galing or saan naman na-derive ngayon si morphine? Anong kind? Okay, so saan na-derive si morphine class? Bakit nakagawa tayo ng, of, ng morphine? Okay, so very good. So that is opium. Okay, saan naman ngayon galing class si heroin? Okay, saan naman galing or saan na-derive si heroin? Again, saan naman na-derive na or saan ang galing si heroin? Saan? Saan class? Of course, kay morphine. Okay, morphine. Okay, heroin. Okay. 
Saan naman ngayon galing si Codin? Okay, saan naman galing ngayon si Codin class, yung drugs na Codin, saan naman galing nang ay saan naman ang galing 'yon? Okay, saan naman ang galing? Of course, kay heroin. Okay, very good. So ang tanda niyo lang class when it comes sa board exam kapag tinanong nga Kapag tinanong when it comes to derivatives, ito yung sagot ninyo. Okay, derivatives of drugs. Okay, ibig sabihin, ang pagsinabi natin derivatives class, it came from or saan ang galing. So, ang acronym na ginagamit natin dyan or the derivatives of drugs, ang uh, opium, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng opium, of course, nang, nang galing yan kay opium poppy plant. Again, ang opium nang galing yan kay opium poppy plant. Ang morphine nang galing yan kay tinatawag natin na opium. Ang heroin nang galing yan kay morphine. Ang codeine nang galing yan kay heroin. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng object po. Uh, opium puppy plant, opium, morphine, heroin, and the codeine. Nakuha ba? Nasundan ninyo class? Nasundan ba? Nasundan. Okay, sige. Next tayo. Next slide. Okay, of course, we have the caffeine. Okay, so ang caffeine, of course, a stimulant uh, drugs are found in coffee. This is the, almost, uh, the oldest known drug in the history, di ba? Of course, the oldest known drug. So uh, sa caffeine class, of course, tandaan nyo lang ang personality dyan na kayo discover, of course, if fried lib, Ferdinand range. Okay, sa caffeine, yung tawag natin dyan, caffeine. Then, of course, ang nicotine naman, that is the addictive substance, Okay, it is an addictive substance. O diba, sa stimulant, bakit tinatawag na stimulant ang coffee? Of course, uh, it will make you active, diba? But of course, yung ibang mga tao, kapag nagkakape sila, nakakatulong sila. Iba yung, yung epekto ng kape sa, sa tao or sa, sa kanila. So again, ang caffeine, it is a stimulant found in coffee. While ang nicotine naman, that is the addictive substance na matatagpuan natin uh, by cigarette smoking or tobacco. Okay, ang tobacco or yun yung tinatawag natin na sacred herb. Okay, so again, ang nicotine, it is an addictive substance na matatagpuan natin or makukuha natin by uh, smoking cigarette. Okay, particularly yung tobacco class. Then, uh, of course, we have the uh, alcohol. Okay, so uh, question ko pala, class. Ano ba yung iniinom natin? Uh, ano ba yung iniinom natin na safe for uh, human consumption? Ethanol ba or methanol? Sige, sa comment section. Ano ba yung iniinom natin that is safe for consumption? Ethanol ba or methanol? Okay, so ang iniinom natin, class, of course, that is the ethanol. Okay? Hindi, well, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, ano, ha, na methanol, ano ka, umiinom ng gas. Okay? So ethanol, class, ang iniinom natin. Huwag mong sabihin yung, eh, sir, bakit ethyl alcohol, pwede bang mainom yun? Brand lang yun, class. Okay? But then again, ang iniinom natin is the ethanol, hindi methanol. Huwag ka mag-uminom ng methanol, uh, JB, ha? Ah. JB, huwag ka mong inom ng uh, methanol kasi ano yan, masusunog ganun. Okay. Those are gases. Okay? So again, ang ethanol, of course, that is yung sa alcohol or yung tinatawag natin na ethyl alcohol that is the most abused regulated drugs. Kasi diba ang uh, alcohol that is the king of all drugs as well as that is the most abused regulated drug. While ang coffee that is the oldest known drug in history while ang alcohol, that is the most abused regulated drugs. So again, it, it is the king of all drugs. So tanda nyo class, ang uh, palagi pangalan na tinatanong dyan sa alcohol is si uh, Muhammad Ibn Zakaria Al-Razi. Okay, so yan yung, siya yung naka-discover or yung tinatawag natin na alcohol. Okay, ethanol. Okay, next. Uh, we have, next tayo, we have the solvent. Okay, ang solvent, of course, those are the inhalant drugs. Na ano natin, di ba? We have the rugby, any other solvent, and so on. Then, of course, we have the uh, personalities in drugs. Si uh, Friedrich Wilhelm Adam Sereterner, 
sa morphine yan. Tandaan nyo, sa morphine. Si Charles uh, Romley Wright, sa heroin naman yan. Sa Alexander Bennett, uh, used cocaine, gumawin ng cocaine. And si Albert Niemen, okay, sa so discovered yung tanatawag natin na cocaine. So ito yung uh, important personalities when it comes sa drugs natin, class. Okay, ulitin natin. Please uh, read, uh, tapos na si Hannah, no? Uh, Harold Barbiran. Harold, pakibasa muna para pumunta tayo sa next slide. Uh, wala ba si Harold? Baka natulog. Ay, nat baka natulog. Uh, si ano na lang. After ni uh, Harold, si uh, Hosne. Sir Hosne. Ay, nasa CR pa. Sige. Uh, Sir Hosne muna. Nandiyan ba si Sir Hosne or wala pa? Ay, baka ano. Uh, yung available na ng class. Uh, raise your hand na ng class ha, kapag magbabasa. Si uh, ano, Montano, a uh, CB. Montano? Nandiyan ba si Montano or si Cesar Montano lang yung nandiyan? Si uh, ano na lang? Uh, Richard Leo Rafael. Sir Rafael, nandiyan ka? Sir Rafael, uh, are you there? Wala? Okay. So, bakit pa lang sumala? Sumasagot. Ako makain. Okay, Trisha Lobiano. Si, si Ma'am Trisha nandiyan. Ulitin natin si Ma'am Trisha. Okay, Ma'am Trisha. Uh, nandiyan pa si Ma'am Trisha. Okay, siya yan. Okay, pakibasa ulit, Ma'am. Caffeine, a stimulant found in coffee. All this known drug. Ano to, sir? Fried lip. Fried lip, Ferdinand Range. Okay. Nicotine, an addictive substance, substance usually obtained from cigarette smoking or tobacco sacred herb. Alcohol, ethanol or ethyl, most abuse regulated drugs, king of all drugs. Muhammad, ano do, sir? Ibn. <laughs> Ibn Zakaria al Razi. Okay. Solvent, inhalant drugs. Personalities, we have Friedrich Willem Adam Sir Turner for morphine. Charles Romley Wright for heroin, Alexander Bennett for cocaine, Albert Nieman, Nieman for discovered cocaine. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so yun class. So let's proceed sa next slide natin. Okay, so of course, ang derivatives class, tanda nyo, it came from kung saan ang galing. Again ha, pag sinabi natin uh, derivatives, di ba? Ang derivatives ng opium, opium poppy plant. Ang derivatives ng uh, morphine is sa opium. Ang derivatives ng heroin sa um, tinatawag natin na uh, om uh, sa morphine. Ang codeine kay heroin, it came from. Kung saan na-derive or saan ang galing. Kaya nakabuo ng bagong droga or drugs. Then, of course, ang synthesized naman or synthesized or synthesized. Okay, it is the uh, combined with other products. Okay, class, it will combine yung isang chemical to other products to form a new product. Kaya di ba, yung shabu, hindi na naman yan agad-agad magkakaroon ng shabu. Meron, kaya, meron tayong laboratory, or yung shabu laboratory or drug laboratory class, doon niluluto or doon kinakombine yung mga other products para maka-create ng shabu. Okay? So that is a synthesized, combined with other products. Came from and combined with other products, nagkakaroon tayo ng synthesized or nagkakaroon ng bagong products ang uh, tinatawag natin na yung chemical na pinaghalo or niluto class sa tinatawag natin na drug laboratory. So that is synthesized. Then, tanda nyo class, ang, uh, uh, we have the Presidential Proclamation Number 1192 that is uh, declaring the third week, uh, declaring the third week of November, okay, yung third week of November class, tinatawag natin yan na Drug Abuse and Prevention and Control Week. Again, ang uh, uh, Presidential Proclamation Number 1192, that is the uh, Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week, that is uh, third week of November, madali na lang, malapit na lang. So we have the pro pre Presidential Proclamation Number 1192. Wala ba kayong klase ngayon na sa face-to-face, -face, ano, Trisha, sa inyo, sa review center ninyo? 
Sir, wala po. Every Saturday and Sunday po yung review namin. Ah, okay. So, maganda yan. Madoble yung, ano, yung review ninyo. Ah, okay. Saturday, Sunday lang. Hindi ba kulang yun kapag Saturday, Sunday? Medyo kulang, no? Kapag ganun yung dati sa amin, dati eh. Yung sa, no, sa school pa lang, nung uh, ano, Saturday, Sunday, kulang talaga. Class. So, dapat ma-fill in yun, yung ano na yun. Lalo na malapit yung board exam, no? So, one month. <laughs> uh, ano lang. Uh, actually, hindi mo, na, hindi mo na i-count yung February class kasi okay sana kung uh, gireskid nila tapos third week of February and so on. So, yan. Presidential Proclamation number 1192. That is, declaring the third week of November as the Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week. Uh, yan. Very good, JB. So, yan. Uh, ano kaya yan? Sa, sa bahay mo lang ikaw nagbabasa, JB? <laughs> Uh, wala ka pa bang power notes or ano? Uh, yung mga mawalang power notes class, pwede pa kayo mag-order sa Cream Coach Philippines ha? para of course uh, makatulong talaga yon sa inyo. Okay? But of course, nagbibigay na ako ng mga files dyan sa ano natin. Okay, very good. Uh, so yan, si JB. So sa December ha, magkakaroon tayo pa rin ng mga Q&A. So kahit uh, yung iba magbabakasyon na ng ano eh, sa ibang mga review center na pinupuntahan ko, magbakasyon na daw sila ng December 15. Sabi ko, grabe, ang aga naman ng bakasyon ninyo. Ano kayo? High school? Okay? Uh, high school daw siya. Uh, ano, magbabakasyon na sila ng December 15. So, uh, hindi. Wag, ano tayo siguro, magbakasyon tayo class ng ano, December 23. Mag-start na 23. After that, after ng 25, 26, 27, 28 klase pa rin. Okay? 29. Okay? So, para lahat ng files na meron ako dito, i-discuss ko yan sa inyo, class. Okay? Para hindi masayang yung ano ninyo, yung uh, time ninyo. So, huwag kayong mag, ano, huwag kayong mag-chill-chill lang kasi board exam is uh, an investment, di ba? Kaysa naman mag-panic ka pa pagdating ng January. Para pagdating ng January, chill-chill na lang kayo na parang ano na lang, mga for finishing na lang. Okay, so yan. Then, of course, ang drugs, alam naman natin, this is a uh, social menace. Okay, social menace. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung drugs class, it is not only the problem of the police, it is not only the problem of the church, but it is a problem of the society. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na din na social menace. Kaya that's why ang, uh, ang drugs, it is, a, it is considered or it is labeled as a social crimes. Kasi again, it is the... Uh, It is not only the problem of the the police, but it is this uh, the problem also of the society as a whole. Then, of course, we have the Republic Act 9165, that is the Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act of 2002, that was uh, approved into law on December or June 7, rather, 2002. Of course, that is the pinaka ano natin, pinaka guidelines natin when it comes to dangerous drugs. Okay, 9165. Okay, so yeah. Then, of course, class, the important provisions of the, uh, or important sections of 9165 ang dapat yung tandaan palagi, ah, or ang dapat yung basahin, or ang dapat yung na-focus sa drugs. Kapag sa section 4, that is the importation of drugs, okay, tandaan nyo, ah, importation of drugs. While ang section 5, of course, we have the, the ESTAD, okay, the sailing, trading, administration, and uh, distribution or dispensing, okay, STAD. Then, manufacture of illegal drugs, that is also in 9165, manufacture. Then, uh, but of course, ang pinaka-highlight natin, class, ang hindi mawawala palagi sa board exam, ang section 11 and section 15. So, dito muna tayo sa section 11, class. Okay, sa section 11, class, that is PDD, or possession of dangerous drugs. Tandaan nyo, ah, under section 11 of 9165, ang possession of dangerous drugs, may penalty and class ng tinatawag natin na reclusion perpetua. Again, ang uh, section 11 of the uh, 9165, may penalty and siya class ng reclusion perpetua to the maximum period. But of course, magbe-base yan or nakadepende yan class sa grams na Uh, nah nahuli ka, you are in possession. Ibig sabihin, hawak mo or dito sa mga body parts mo that is possession of dangerous drugs. Okay, tandaan niyo ko, ang penalty niya is uh, reclusion perpetua to death. 
kapag nahulihan ka class ng 10 grams or more ng om uh, omeheko, uh, opium, morphine, heroin, and pudin. 10 grams or more, ha? ibig sabihin sobra sa 10 grams. So, uh, ang marijuana, reason oil, other dangerous drugs, or we have the lysergic acid, the penalamide. So, ang, uh, kapag 10 grams or more class, sa mga nabanggit dito, you, uh, yung penalty mo kapag you will be convicted, of course, that is reclusion per petwa. Then, 50 grams or more class, kapag uh, sa shabu naman, or metamphetamine hydrochloride, ang nahuli sa'yo kapag sobra ng 50 grams. Okay, pag ano, ibig sabihin, 50 grams and below, okay, uh, hindi yan papasok yan. Kapag 50 grams or more automatic class, papasok sa reclusion perpetua ang magiging penalty mo kapag maging convicted ka. Then, of course, uh, 500 grams or more sa marijuana or engine hemp. Again, uh, 500 grams or more sa marijuana or engine hemp. Okay, ano yung magiging penalty mo class kapag halimbawa 499 grams of marijuana or engine hemp ang nahuli sa iyo? Ano yung magiging penalty mo? Okay, sige nga sa comment section. Okay, kasi di ba sinabi niya 500 grams or more kapag nahulihan ka or nahuli ka, nahulihan ka ng marijuana or engine hemp. So ano yung magiging penalty mo class? Sige. Ano yung magiging penalty mo kapag uh, nahulihan ka ng marijuana. Okay, very good. Okay, reclusion temporal. Nakalagay yun, no? If lesser quality or if lesser quality, ang magiging uh, punishment mo class is one degree lower, that is reclusion temporal, ibig sabihin, you will be punished of 12 years and one day to 20 years. Nakuha ba? Again, if lesser quality, that is 12 years plus one day, to 20 years yung magiging penalty mo sa particular crime na yan. Natanda nyo, class. Halimbawa, 9 grams ng uh, uh, opium, morphine, heroin, and acudin, that is lesser quality, reclusion temporal. Kapag 49 grams ng shabu, reclusion temporal rin. Ibig sabihin, 1 degree lower ang nagiging penalty mo. Nakuha nyo, class, kapag... Uh, yung naka-state or kapag nahulihan ka or, or nahulihan ka or you are in possession of this uh, uh, nabanggit na mga droga dito. Tapos uh, dito, again, 10 grams or more, 50 grams or more, 500 grams or more. Ibig sabihin in class, you will be okay penalized with reclusion perpetua. 20 years and 1 day to 40 years. While kapag sinatawag natin, lesser quality or lesser quantity rather, Okay, of course, one degree lower from reclusion perpetua to reclusion temporal. So meaning 12 years and one day to 20 years, yung magiging kaso or magiging kabayaran or magiging punishment ng crime na nakumit mo. Nawa? Nasundan ba? Nasundan niyo? Okay na? Paki-confirm uh, baka ano, masyado ba ako mabilis or okay lang? Okay lang? Uh, okay. So, yan. Oh, uh, wait lang. Okay. Uh, may tanong dito si JB. Coach, general rule po ba yung hindi ka makapag-bail pag reclusion perpetua ang penalty mo? Okay. That is the common mistake rin. Okay. So, tanda niyo class, every crime or every penalty or every offense or crime na nakumit mo whether it is uh, penalized by reclusion perpetua to death, you can still post bail. Okay? Pwede ka pa rin makapag-fiansa. Diba? Para na-discuss na natin sa criminal procedure, ah, as long as when the evidence of guilt is not, okay, evidence of guilt, uh, evidence of guilt is not strong, okay, you cannot, okay, uh, if the evidence of guilt is not strong, meaning you can post bail kahit anong krimen ang nakumit mo, class. Nakuha ba? Tanda ninyo, you can still post bail as long as the evidence of guilt is not strong. Ibig sabihin, the prosecution failed to establish the guilt of the person or mahina yung uh, evidence or mga ebidensya laban sa'yo. You can still post bail. Nakuha ba? Bakit? Uh, eh, eh, hindi ba kayo nag-attend ng, pro ng procedure natin? Criminal procedure? Or na, na ano na yun, nakalimutan ninyo? Nakalimutan na ba JB? 
Di ba na-discuss natin doon kapag any crimes, kahit anong-anong crimes or anong-ano dyan, as long as the evidence of guilt is not strong, you can still post bail. Okay, pero ang ibang mga student dyan, kapag hindi nila alam yon isasagot nila sa board exam na no, hindi pwede. Pero of course, pwede-pwede pa rin, class. Okay? Of course, class, kapag ang uh, tanong sa board exam, if the evidence of guilt is strong, tapos reclusion perpetua pa yung binigay na penalty sa iyo, of course, hindi, hindi ka pwede makapagpiyansa. Okay? For your temporary liberty. Halimbawa, di ba, si, um, si Laila de Lima, di ba, si uh, Senator Laila de Lima, kung titignan niyo yung kanyang nakomit na crime is non-bailable offense, But still, bakit naka, nakapag-bail siya, class? Bakit? Ano yung reason doon? Bakit nakapag-bail siya? Or naka-temporary uh, release siya? Or naka-release siya sa custody? Bakit? Ano yung reason? Ano yung reason doon? So, naintindihan nyo na ngayon? Okay, kasi nga, ang evidence of guilt is not strong. Okay? But of course, hindi yun siya, ano ha? Hindi yun siya... Um, Kumaga, hindi yan siya assurance na mapapawalang salad talaga siya. Kasi of course, ang bail class, magkakaroon pa yan ng trial and hearing. Okay? So, magkakaroon pa yan pa rin ng trial and hearing. Ipagpatuloy pa rin yung trial and hearing. Doon pa malalaman <clears throat> kung guilty ba talaga siya or not guilty of the crime. Nakuha ba class? Again, any crimes na nakomit ninyo, as long as the evidence of guilt is not strong, still you can post bail. Pwede, pwede ka pa rin magpiyansa. But of course, ibang utapan na kapag uh, masyadong malakas ang ebidensya laban sa iyo or the evidence of guilt is very strong. Nakuha ba? Nakuha ninyo? Bakit walang sumasagot? Buhay pa ba kayo dyan? Yes, or... sir. Yes. Ah, okay. Akala ko ba? <laughs> Akala ko ma, ano na, natutulog na kayo. Huwag kayo matulog kasi maganda yung discussion natin class. Magagamit at magagamit ito sa board exam. Kasi uh, ano eh, uh, kung mag, um, maraming na ituturo na of course mga maling information. So da dapat pagdating na dito pa lang, ipokorek na natin. Okay, so huwag kayo magalit ha kapag kinukorek ko kayo. Okay, so of course minsan nagkakamali rin ako kaya um, open for correction pa rin ako. So that's why yun doon tayo nag-grow. Okay, then of course ang pinaka rin ka-importante class na na penalty or pinaka-importante rin na section under 9165 is the section 15. Okay, ang section 15 of course uh, dalawa kasi class. Okay, the first offense and the second offense. Ang first offense class kapag na na of course you will be uh, guilty sa use UDD or the use of dangerous drugs. Ang PDD kasi is the possession of dangerous drugs. So sa UDD class or the use of dangerous drugs, merong first offense and second offense. In the first offense, okay, you will be uh, you will be serving a minimum of six months. in the rehabilitation center or the, in the government center class. First offense yan. Kapag on the second offense, uh, after mo ma-rehabilitate, after ka na naka-undergo ng rehabilitation, wala pa rin changes, nakakomit ka na naman or nahulihan ka na naman or uh, you convicted again of use of dangerous drugs. Still, okay, ikakulong ka na class. Imprisonment of six years plus one day to 12 years. Okay, ang tanong ngayon sa board exam, tanong sa board exam, Ano yung mas mataas na penalty? Uh, possession of dangerous drug or use of dangerous drugs? Ano yung mas mataas na penalty sa dalawa? Ano class? Ano yung mas mataas na penalty sa dalawa na yan? Use ba or possession of dangerous drugs? Ano class? Of course, uh, very obvious naman, no? possession ang pinaka ano class PDD ang tanda niyo na PDD and UDD again ang sa PDD class dalawa ang uh, tinatina natin diyan kapag pasok doon sa quality prescribed under the 9165 automatic that is uh, punishable by reclusion perpetua to death but lower than that of course that is a uh, one degree lower magiging reclusion temporal that is 12 years and one day to 20 years While ang UDD or the use of dangerous drug, we have the first offense and the second offense. First offense, of course, the minimum of six months rehabilitation in the government agency. While in the second offense naman class, that is imprisonment of six years plus one day to 12 years. So meron pang first offense and second offense. Kaya kung titignan ninyo class or in the real uh, McCoy, 
Kaya di ba kahit na uhulihin ka kasi you are in possession of dangerous drugs, ang ginagawa na mga drug addicts ay pinaflash nila sa sa sink or pinaflash nila sa CR or yung droga para of course aamin sila sa use of dangerous drugs. Para pagdating ng mga uh, PDA agent or police officer on their entrapment operation, wala silang makita in possession in his or her possession na any dangerous drugs. Kaya that's why, kasi kung titinan nyo, uh, of course, kapag kayo, ha, kapag gumagamit kayo dyan or you are in possession, alam nyo nang gagawin nyo. Uh, huwag kayong magpahuli sa ano possession. Magpahuli kayo sa use of dangerous drugs. Kasi may first offense and second offense. Ba? Okay, ay, joke lang ha. Uh, pero wag yung ano ha. Kasi kapag baka mahuli kayo tapos nabalita sa, uh, sa TV, uh, sinabi kasi ni Coach, uh, ano, kada sinabi kasi ni coach na aamin lang ako or magpapahuli lang ako ng buhay sa use hindi lang sa possession. O di ba sabi baka sabihin naman ay matalino talaga tong bata na to ah. <laughs> okay, so wag na wag kayo sa ano plus ha? sa uh, dapat sa ano lang sa use lang kasi medyo may ano pa eh, may pag-asa pa, may rehabilitation and may first offense, second offense. Okay, nakuha niyo? Nakuha niyo na ba? Naintindihan? Yes, okay. okay. Okay, yes, so ito, ah, ito yung dalawa yung pinakatandaan ninyo, class. Uh, section 11, that is possession. Section 15, that is the use of dangerous drugs. Palaging tanatanong to sa board exam. Ito lang palagi yung ano nila eh. Ito yung palagi nilang uh, tanatanong. Gas-gas na to, class. Kaya hindi ka pwedeng mag-take ng board exam kapag hindi mo alam ang section 11 and section 15 ng 9165. Okay, so yan. Then, uh, next tayo. Okay, then of course, the, we have the section 18 class. Very important na ito, ha? Ang section 18, we have the unnecessary prescription. Sino ang kinakasuhan dito, class, sa unnecessary prescription under the 9165? Ibig sabihin, basta-basta na lang magbigay ng, ano, ng reseta. So, sino ang kinakasuhan dito? Okay, on the comment section, class, sino ang kinakasuhan sa unnecessary prescription? Okay, of course, the physician. Okay, the physician class, ang kinakasuhan dyan. Okay, basta-basta na lang siya nagbigay or nag, uh, nagtalaga or nagbigay ng kanyang prescription or drug prescription on a particular person. So, bawal yan class, ha? So, dapat uh, hindi, ano, okay, unnecessary prescription. Then, of course, we have the uh, planting of evidence. Okay, ang planting of evidence class, tanda niyo under the 9165, uh, under the 9165, Kapag you plant evidence, hindi ba inusente yung tao, binigyan mo, uh, nagplanta or uh, planted lahat yung ginawa ninyo, kapag napatunayan class na planted yan, okay, ang penalty na ibibigay sa iyo ng state is the death penalty. But of course, death penalty as of now is temporarily suspended. So wala mo na tayong death. So ibig sabihin, pwede ma-reduce yan sa reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment since it is a... Uh, it is a special law. Okay, so again, ang section 29, that is the planting of evidence. Okay, planting of evidence. So, magiging penalty mo class kapag natpatunayan that nagplanted ka. So, that is uh, punishable by by then. Okay, so that is the planting of evidence. Then, of course, uh, meron tayong tanatawag na board regulation or bari mo na. Okay, so we have the board regulation number 5, series of 2003. Okay, so actually, ito yung thesis ko class uh, my, in my master's sa uh, uh, University of Baguio. Okay, so board regulation number 5, series of 2003. Kasi dati class, pinagsabay ko yung ano ko, review at master. So ang uh, board regulation number 5, series of 2003 class, it grants yung tanatawag na na compensation, reward, or award uh, to any person who will provide information class to a successful operation only. Uh, kaya nagkakaroon kaya, di ba, minsan every uh, December, okay, tamang-tama no, Pasko at New Year, uh, nag-release yung PIDEA na mga person na nakapagsumbong sa kanila, lalo na yung malalaking mga fish, okay, malalaking isda, ang naisumbong mo, yung mga drug lords sa lugar ninyo. Okay, binibigyan ng compensation, ng reward or ng award ng tinatawag na rin na BGMP, ay ng uh, PIDEA, yung mga tao na yan, class, na makapagbigay ng uh, information relative to that person. Tapos, nagkaroon ng operation ng PIDEA and PNP and so on. Then, naging successful, so bibigyan ka ng award. Kaya, di ba, 
minsan, depende kung gaano kalaki yung tao na naisumbong mo, uh, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million ang bibigay siya, or 500,000, or pinakamababa. So, or 300,000 ang pinakamababa na ibigay sa'yo. Kaya kung ako sa inyo, isumbong nyo na yung mga kapitbahay niyo dyan, then kasi um, makakuha kayo ng uh, award or reward or compensation to those successful operation na naisumbong mo yung tao na yun, di ba? So that is a board regulation number 5, series of 2003. But of course, class, that is only applicable to a successful operation only. Okay? But make sure, ha, kapag nagsumbong kayo, ba isinumbong nyo yung kapitbahay ninyo, yung kakilala ninyo, yung kaklase ninyo, na ganito ganyan, make sure na maging successful ang operation ng PIDEA or uh, PNP or any law enforcement agency. Kasi class, kapag hindi, kayo yung babalikan, di ba? Okay. So, mas maganda na lang huwag mo na lang isumbong, no? Okay, pero of course, depende na lang sa inyo. Okay, so, anong tawag natin doon, class? Kapag, uh, ko, uh, kapag nagbigay ng compensation, nagbigay ng reward, or nagbigay ng award to any successful operation. Anong 